North Lakes Training Group, uh, North Lakes Training Group's Master Baker. So I'm here to show you today how to make a very simple white bread dough that you can use and you can make your own bread. So I know you've all got a lot of strong flour stored up and yeast because there's none on the shelves at any of the supermarkets anywhere. So you need to use it up before it goes off. So I'm going to show you how. First of all, I just want to talk you very quickly through the ingredients that you need for a very basic dough. A basic dough consists of strong white flour or bread flour, as it might be sold in the supermarkets that you might buy it from. Um, this has got lots of gluten in it, which allows for elasticity and allows you to get a framework in your bread or your buns or whatever you're making. So you always need a good strong flour for that. Water to bind. The ingredients. I've got some warm water here. I am using warm water, but you don't have to. You can use cold water, you can use ice if you want. The warmer the water, the more quickly the yeast will start working within the flour once we add it to it and we mix it together. So if you want to, you can mix your dough in the morning, you can go off and have your daily exercise, you can go off and go to work if you want to, and you can leave your dough in the fridge covered, come back in the evening. And work it again but we'll go through the process of that in a minute so that's your main uh, liquid if you like you can use other liquids you can use milk if you wanted to but it's a little bit heavier on the bread and it won't rise as much very important salt I know it's an egg cup but I've got my salt in there you know what salt looks like it is a simple table salt that you can buy from anywhere um, the idea behind the salt is number one to give your bread flavour but also it restricts the speed that yeast can start moving. So it acts as two things, flavour and restricts your yeast. Otherwise your yeast will work too quickly, your bread will overprove, and, and in the oven it'll just be almost like a pancake when it comes out. Now I've only got two different types of yeast. There is fresh yeast, baker's yeast, block yeast, various different names for it that you can buy. Some of the supermarkets will sell it to you. Um, if you can get that, that is the best yeast you can get. It's like a browny grey block and it smells lovely really, but a bit weird. Um, as a baker, I, I love the smell. We're gonna use dried yeast, readily available anywhere. Now you don't have to mix it with the water beforehand and a little bit of sugar. You don't need to, you can put it straight into the flour. It just, that's what a baker would do. This one is a granulated yeast. I don't know if you can see that in the picture. Very, very fine. It is very much like a dry yeast, but it is encapsulated, so it's covered. And that one will need to be reconstituted with your water. Otherwise, you just have little grains of it in there that won't, in your dough actually, that won't actually allow the yeast to work. So there's your ingredients, four basic ingredients. There are other ingredients we can put into it and perhaps if we do another one of these, we'll have a look at it, uh, at some of, the recipe, uh, some of the ingredients we can put in. There is a basic dough recipe just handily here for you, if you need it. Um, this is what I'm gonna use today, 500 grams of bread flour, 10 grams of salt, 30 grams of yeast. Well, actually I've looked at the, the packages, follow pack instructions, and you need one of these for the 500 grams of bread, that would be a fresh yeast, and anything between 250 to 300 mils of water. We might use a little bit more than that, it depends on the gluten strength in the flour. So I'm gonna put these in. What I will say is, salt on one side, and, oops, need some scissors to open it up, yeast on the other. What you don't want to do is mix them two together because the salt, if it comes in direct contact with your yeast, will start to kill it because that is an acid. And there we have it. So I'm just going to give them a quick mix in a second and we'll add the water and we'll mix the dough. So just before I mix the dough, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I'm going to need to use today to make the simple dough. Um, obviously you've got a mixing bowl. You don't need a mixing bowl if you don't want. You can do it on your work surface. But obviously this keeps it all together at first. A measuring jug of some sort to measure your water. Obviously I'm going to bake the bread on some trays and I'm going to use, this looks like a greaseproof paper but it's more of a siliconized 
paper. So it's got an extra layer of silicone on it, which is better for bread, it doesn't stick. It's greaseproof paper, it can stick to it. I've got a second tray there that I'll show you in a minute, well in a minute, when we put it in the oven, what I'm going to use that for. I'm going to use that to create some steam in the oven. That was going to be for my bread, that was going to be to create steam. And it's baking. If you want to score your bread at the top to make nice patterns, we're going to make a bloomer loaf today out of it. So we're going to score it. You just need a, a sharp knife. This is the one that I use. If you've got a bigger one at home, don't, don't go out and buy one. Try not to use serrated if you can help it because they can tear the bread a little bit. A nice sharp knife. Obviously scales. A scraper to scrape any bits and pieces out. That's what I use. That's what us bakers use. But you can quite easily use something along these lines that you might be able to find a lot easier. Supermarkets, cook shops, etc. And then weirdly, I've got a cup and I've got a big box. Now, when we come to prove the bread, we need to make sure that it's covered. So I'm going to use those. So you're coming back into the... Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start adding the flour now, uh, sorry, the water to the flour. And you'll see now it's going to start getting a bit gooey. And we want this to be quite a soft dough. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to feel this. You're just watching. I mean, obviously, my lovely camera person can, which is my youngest daughter, Ella, by the way, who is actually filming me right at this moment in time in a pair of Grinch slippers, <laughs> which you don't really want to see. So can you see the gooiness of that now? Now, it will get gooey. Now, in a minute, I'm going to take this out of the bowl because that's a bit restrictive. And as you can see, it's quite sticky, but we want it like that for now. I have got some extra flour over here. So I'm just going to put a little bit. This is strong flour again. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to use my scraper all over my hands. Doesn't matter about that at the moment. Use my scraper, get it on here. We're going to film this in stages because if you're to mix it on a mixing machine over there, number one, it'll be a bit loud. And number two, it'll take about five, ten minutes. Well, I'm going to start kneading this now, and that'll take me at least ten minutes now. You don't want to watch me doing that forever, do you? So I can add some extra flour to it if I feel it's a bit sticky. Obviously, I can add a little bit more water, but ideally, I don't want to do that if I can help it. So, how do you knead it? Oh. Oh, it's quite simple really, you do it how you want to, however you feel comfortable. There will be people telling you you can do it all sorts of way. I've been doing this quite a few years as you can imagine. And my way is by pushing one way using my, my palms of my hand and pushing the other way using the other palm of my hand. And over time that will start stretching the gluten. There's proteins in this. A bit stickier than I wanted it actually this, but there you go. So there's, there's some proteins in this, pretending I had in globulin, and what they form is gluten. And what I'm trying to do now is stretch the gluten out. And the gluten is the framework of your bread. Now, the best way to get any dough off your hands is by using a bit of flour. And whilst you might think, ooh, that's going back in the bread, well, it is the dough after all, and I've only just started mixing it. If this was right at the end, it'd be a little bit different, but it's not. So I am now going to start kneading that. So we'll just pause the video for a minute and we'll come back in a couple of minutes to see what it looks like. So as you can see, I've been kneading away now for about five minutes. Um, as I said to you earlier, I'm a little bit used to this. I've been doing it for years. Obviously in the bakery, we'd have something very similar to our Connie here, our KitchenAid. However, they would be a lot bigger and they do all the work. Obviously I wouldn't be studying here making one loaf of bread like this. So I'm getting, as you can see now, a smoother dough, a lot smoother. You might have noticed me during that time lapse, just adding a touch of flour as I'm doing it. Two reasons, one, so it doesn't stick, and B, because I've just got it a little bit too sticky at the beginning. 
Um, so it's just, you know, have a bit of flour to it. And that's just feeling as you go along. As you can tell, I'm a little bit out of breath because, well, I haven't done it for a while. And use that little baby over there. So I'm just going to keep going for another couple of minutes because what I want is a dough that is smooth, that is elastic -y. And if I touch it, you can start seeing it come back up, but it's not quite as smooth as I want it yet, but I'm, I am gonna keep going. As I said to you before, kneading, this is my method of kneading, this is how I do it. Some people will tell you to do it like that, which is absolutely fine, it works. Um, when I first started out in the bakery, my, my first boss always told me to use two hands, otherwise you're paying me for half the wage. So I've always learned to use two hands, but if you're doing it this way, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're doing that, that's a bit silly. But you can do it any way you want. Get your fists in there. It don't matter, you're gonna stretch this dough, you're gonna knead it. Okay, so I'm getting to the end of the kneading now. It still feels warm because of that warm water. What was it, because I, my friction isn't quite as good. Um, it's not as warm as it might be through one of these machines. So, what we now need to do with this dough, is we need to leave it to prove. It's called an intermediate proof to try and develop some flavours and continue. What it'll do, it'll rise and we need to double in size. A couple of ways of doing it. Original bowl, pop it back in, cover it with cling film. <coughs> Excuse me. Because what we don't want to happen is for any drafts to get to it and to form a skin on it. We want it to still be as soft when we take it out as it is when we put it in. Another way of doing it, if you don't want to use cling film, plastic and all that, onto your table, turn your bowl over and leave it. When you come back to it, in about an hour, it'll be doubled in size. So what we're going to do, I am going to cover it in cling film, because whilst that is rising, I'm going to have a clean day, wash my hands again, and then probably going to have a brew, something like that. Okay, so we've been away for what, about an hour, hour and a half-ish else. Mm -hmm. um, into bits and pieces, we've had a brew. Uh, we've washed our hands again, because that's what we have to do. Uh, and as you can see, looking at the dough, as I pull this away with the cling film, it's doubled, at least doubled in size, and weirdly, we've got a bit of an extra bit on the top there, which is just going down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to what we call knock this back. Just get my scraper. So we can pull it out, put it onto the table. What we're then gonna do is weigh it and divide it into two loaves and we're gonna mold two different shapes of loaves just to give you an idea. So, as you can see, I'm just gonna knock it back and knock some of the air out of it. And what you can't smell is the beautiful smell coming from that, which is CO2. A beautiful dough there. Just put this in the sink a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I haven't knocked it back fully yet. Just weigh it. So I've got the same. You can see, about 949 grams. And I say about, that's exact. So half of that is away. I'm just using the plastic scraper. 70. Mathematicians about or 70. That should be about the same that side. Right, okay. Let me wash it in a minute. So I'm going to make a long bloomer shape and I'm going to make a rounded shape. Well, I've got a little bit of flour just to help me. Don't need loads. So flatten it out a little bit if you can. And what you want to do with these, you can either mould them both round, but I'm going to just going to go fold it in and keep folding these in from the edge. And so you're going to start tucking this underneath and use your thumbs. And this is probably quite quick, but that's all I work. And you can see how underneath, so underneath it, there's a little bit of a seam where I've hidden it, but I've got quite a flattish top. Oh, a little bit of flour, just because I can. And I'm going to put that onto the tray, ready to 
have another proof. This one, I'm going to make round. I'll show you how I do it. Now, again, I'm a baker, I've been doing it for years, but you can do it however you want. It doesn't have to be perfect if you don't want it to be. Doesn't matter. And all you need to do is just keep folding them and moving it around into the center, <coughs> excuse me, into the center again. So all I'm doing is pinching it a little bit and pulling it into the center. Not with lots of force. If I pull it, it might rip it. If I just turn it over now, you can see it's roundish on the top. If I was doing this myself, I'll be using the palms of my hand, this part of the hand, and pushing it in and out just to mould it up. There you go, I've got a round ball again. All the bits and pieces on the bottom, so you don't you don't want to put that on the tray like that because as it opens up, it could open up and look a bit unsightly. And it won't matter, it's a loaf of bread, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that on the tray. So this tray now, we're going to prove again. So we're going to leave these again for another hour, hour and a half, whatever it might take. And I'm going to use the box and the cup. But I need to fill that with boiling water. So excuse me a minute, hello, I'll hide yours. I have just boiled this up. <coughs> so what I'm going to do here, just let me grab a cloth a minute, sorry else, one second. Let's get rid of that. Again, I don't want any drafts to get to it to cause it to skin over. So I'm going to put this box over it and I'm going to allow that's boiling water in there in a cup. I know you probably can't see it that well. And that's going to start creating steam in there. Very simple. So it'll create a little bit of moisture on the skin and wipe the skin over. And it'll just try and warm it up so it's acting as a proving box, if you like. And that is now ready. I'm going to leave that for about an hour, an hour and a half. We'll come back to it when we're ready. Just before it's ready, we'll stick the oven on ready to go, about 220 degrees. Now, I said earlier on that we've used warm water there and it's taken about an hour for the first proof. Probably the same again. If you use colder water, it'll take a lot longer, as you can imagine, dependent on the temperature in your room as well. It's warmish in here, isn't it, at the moment? Um, so it takes a little bit shorter. But if it's cold, put it in the fridge, as you can imagine, it takes longer. I know it's pretty obvious, but it can be used to your advantage. If you need to go off shopping, one at a time, two metres apart, then it can be done. And you can go and do your shopping, safe in the knowledge that your dough is nice and safe. And as I said earlier, I go off and perhaps make it in the morning uh, and leave it till later on in the evening before we bake it. And there we are. Okay, so welcome back. We have now proved our loaves. I've just moved them near the oven. So the oven is now preheated to 220 degrees. And what I've done in here, I've put a tray in the bottom. So if you remember, I said there's a, a second tray. That has been in there and that is now red hot. So we're gonna look at the dough. Take that off. See how it's risen? Let me just move that a second. Can you see it all right, else? Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to score it, but first of all, what I want to do is go back to the oven. Now the water that has been steaming to keep the, the dough moist, I'm going to now reuse that in the tray and this. There we are. You start to create a bit of steam in there. And what the steam will do is create a nice crust on here and just hopefully make the crust a little bit more caramelised. Not like that bird, but... So, I blew my loaf, sharp knife, and all I'm going to do, just before it goes in the oven, is cut it across there like that. And as that proves up in the oven a little bit more because of the heat, it should just open up. And this one, any, it doesn't matter what you do with it, all I'm going to do is a very simple cross. Steam will be in the oven, it'll still be pretty, and I'm going to chuck that in there now, nice and gentle. That'll keep steaming. And I'm going to chuck it in for 20 to 25 minutes. And not the size of that low, so I'm going to put 23 in there just for now. And then we'll see what it looks like in about 20 odd minutes. So now we're going to go and have another rest. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back in it. 
Uh, the bread has now been in the oven for 25 minutes and it's all ready to come out. So, if you want to come on over a look at it. So, just stand back a little while it opens up. It's looking hot. So, as I put it out, here you go. Can you see how it's opened up as we've been baking it? So, we take it out. I've taken the other tray out as well. So, I didn't want that. Now I'm going to take one of my gloves off and underneath, tap it, sounds hollow, that's a good sign that it's ready. You can see how easily it came off that tray. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to leave them on a tray like that so they can cool down now and all the air can get to them and they're not going to sweat underneath. And there we have our bread. And we'll now look inside it in a bit once it has cool day. So final bit, the best bit. Let's cut it open, let's taste it. Still slightly warm, doesn't matter. And what, what we were listening to before, you wouldn't have heard this, is as it was cooling down, it was starting to crackle and you might be able to see, I don't know how close you can get, the eyes aren't as good as they used to be, little cracks in it, but it just crackles as it's just coming back. So. So there we are, okay, that, that's your loaf of bread. Oops. There it is, one loaf of homemade, home needed, beautiful bread. And all it needs now, in my opinion, and I am a person who likes the end, is some real butter on it. And I know I'm gonna to get told off for this with a bit of jam, homemade jam, and that. Who can't resist a bit of that, eh?